Hello everyone, welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Libra in February 2020. Hello Libra, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. <laughs> All right guys, we have wrapped up the first month of 2020. How was it for you? How was your January? Was it great? Was it good? Was it not so great? I don't know. Uh, in any case, I hope it did go well for you. I hope uh, uh, the start of the new year was, was, a, was a pleasant one for you at the very least, okay? Uh, but now we're here doing February's reading, so happy Valentine's Day for those who are celebrating. Even if you're not celebrating, I wish you a happy Valentine's Day uh, just the same. Uh, I told every other sign, and I'll tell every other sign after you, that uh, as an adult person living in this world, uh, as much as Valentine's Day might be sort of a cheesy holiday, or it's like, you know, not even really a true quote-unquote holiday, um, I still think that there's something positive or... Um, effective I guess or something that I would wish that people could have on that day because you know I think a lot of times we become jaded to that day or we become jaded to the idea of love and affection amongst people and you know love is more than just romantic love right so you love your family you love your friends don't you so it's like if you are not focused on the romantic aspect of Valentine's Day focus on the other types of love the platonic love and the familial love that you have for people and I hope that you're able to engage in that and and really you know, connect with other people and, and feel supported and loved and all that good stuff. So whether you're romantically involved and you're going on a very romantic date or you're going to be home alone, sitting at, <laughs> sitting on your couch, eating Doritos, you know, with your, you know, two cats, whatever you're doing, I hope it's an amazing day for you. Okay. All right. And I mean, you know, you're ruled by Venus Libra, so it's kind of like, you know, your business to be <laughs> sort of an ambassador for love and affection and connection here in this world. Right. But I can't tell you how to live your life, yeah? <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Shuffle it off camera. That's your main spread there. I will shuffle on camera now for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all of the cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that is when the reading begins. Timestamp is in the description box if you want to jump ahead. You will find the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me, also in the description box. Uh, you simply send me your question. You pay me through PayPal. I let you know, hey, it'll be about this many hours or this many days before you get your reading. I upload it here privately to YouTube. You can watch it forever till the end of time. And that's pretty much it. But if you have any questions uh, before you place an order, feel free to email me at the same address and I will answer you as soon as I can. All right. All right, guys, let's get into it. I want to see Libra's outcome for February 2020. Let's see Libra's outcome for February 2020, please. Please show me. Oh, look at that. You, I'm not counting that because I didn't start. Okay, but you had... An Ace of Wands and the Queen of Wands pop out. So maybe some of you are dealing with Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Could be new starts or new ideas and new new inspiration involving Fire Signs, maybe. But let's go ahead and try that again. Libra's outcome for February 2020, please show me. Libra's outcome in February 2020, please show me. Hmm. Oh. Again, to the floor. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Where did it go? It's right there. One second. Come here, you. Yeah. Got it. With the tip of my finger. <laughs> Came in a side position like this. So let's go ahead and flip it around a little bit and see how they want it on the board for you. Which way for Libra? Please show me. Okay, thank you. Like that. All right, Libra, let's see what came. I'm picking up the crystal before I needed it. Oh, no, I just, that's fine. All right, let's see. I cut my nails, so now I'm back to, like, scrambling to flip cards over. Mm -hmm. All right. Something like that. I'm going to, oh, that's a little crooked. There we go. <laughs> oh, and that's too close together. This is like the one time I'm like super like OCD about something is when I lay cards on a tarot reading. Good. Looks good. All right. Here we go. All right, guys. Please show me where Libra is in February 2020. Libra, February 2020. Please show me. Got it. 
Mm. All right, Libra, coming in to February, you come in with the Justice card in reverse. I swear to God, with the focus. Is it the deck? Is it the lighting? I've not changed my setup ever, really. And it like struggles to focus these days. Anyway, that's what the card looks like up, uh, excuse me, upside right. But like I said, it's in the reverse. This is your major arcana uh, card, Libra. Like, you know, not to like be totally like, you know, basic with it, but they're giving me like the word imbalanced, unstructured, unfocused, um, out of sorts, disarray, confused, like just a lot of things that show me some person or an energy or situation which is unstable and insecure or unsecure, insecure and unsecure, both things, okay? Um, this is a distressing energy. Um, Libra, it feels like the confusion that you're experiencing or that you're witnessing or that is shared between you and other people in a situation is like almost to the point where it's like out of control, almost to the point where it's like, oh God, that's not even like, a, I mean, maybe it's a reference for some people, but like they're showing me um, like a, 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 a carriage, a horse, a horse drawn carriage, like, and you know, there's normally a driver, somebody behind the reins, right? And there's no driver in this carriage carrying like groceries or, or, you know, sometimes they carry people, whatever, whatever's inside is like in peril. <laughs> uh, and I don't mean to laugh cause it's not funny, but it's like, that's, it's like really dramatic. Like what they're showing me. It's like something from like a 1930s movie or, you know, a movie like, of a, of a time in the past where we were using horses and carriages and not cars or trucks, you know what I mean? And it, whatever's on board, the, the, the packages, the people, whatever is in danger of like crashing and like going off of a cliff or like colliding into a tree or into, you know, a, a big boulder or something like that. I don't know. And it's like really precarious and kind of dangerous, um, scary, you know? Uh, that's a lot uh, because it's just the justice card but like they keep showing me something where there is like a lack of control there's a lack of focus there's a lack of someone the carriage driver the person who holds the reins that controls the horses there's a lack of that person being present or a lack of that person being able to do that job um, I don't know where you fit into that scene uh, Libra, but that's what this feels like. It feels like things are out of control. Things are not being steered correctly or steered at all. And, um, uh, it's, it's, it's really scary. It's because whatever is on board the carriage, people, you know, things of value, you know, you can translate that into modern times, people, people equal people, but things of value. So like your job, your house, your finances, uh, any type of security or anything that makes you feel safe in this world or safe in your circumstances is kind of like, it's like crazy. It's like, oh, geez, I don't like it. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, who would like it? Um, maybe a psychopath, I guess. But uh, this feels like something is out of control, out of someone's hands, out of someone's even realm of understanding could be the issue here. It could, okay. Ah, okay, okay, okay. This could be about uh, mental and emotional behavior. And maybe someone is having an episode or having an extended episode, really being in a negative, quote unquote, negative space or not a very um, peaceful place in terms of their mental state or their emotional state, this is what this feels like, okay? It, it's going to run the gamut. Not everybody is dealing with that thing, uh, with that situation that I just mentioned. But in general, Libra, things are out of control. Things are not in balance. Things are really haywire, energetically. I, I'm not even seeing any scenario other than this horse in the carriage and, like, the pandemonium that can come out of something like that, you know? So that's interesting. What else happens, please? Yeah, man. Okay. So, oh, 
Is this okay? It's possible. Thank you. So what I'm feeling, because I feel I did use the word witness or observe or something like that. And it feels like maybe you or someone around you is witnessing all of this. And that is where this feeling of imbalance or out of control. Thank you. Not being able to control, not being able to get a handle on the situation, not being able to influence anything. I think that might be for lack of. For lack of a perspective just yet, I'm going to say it's you, Libra. You're watching, you're witnessing other people act in, in, in very unbecoming manners or you're watching certain uh, circumstances kind of like blow up or, you know, go off the rails, whatever it is, and you're just sitting there watching it, right? Let's just say that's you, Libra, for the sake of keeping it straight. It's not going to be all Libras that are sitting and, and observing, but for the sake of the argument or the sake of the reading, I'm just going to put you guys there. Because what I'm feeling around you, yes, is this conflict. Oh, man, there's a there's a deep conflict here. I mean, if not deep, uh, a very sharp, stinging, ooh, uh, combative energy. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Five of Swords, right? So around your search situation right now, uh, Libra, that you might be able to discern, you might be able to observe. You're watching people have arguments. You're watching people have all kinds of disagreements and conflicts with one another. And it's really uh, confining for you. It's really uh, upsetting to you. And, you know, I'm not saying this is exactly what's going on because I'm going to assume this is not what the case is, but it, they're giving me now this image of like a child watching their parents argue, which could be going on. But again, in that scenario that they're showing me, you would be the child, Libra. However, I'm going to assume most of you are not children, children. Like you're not like under the age of 18. I'm going to assume that most of you are adults. <laughs> and that could still go, you know, that could still work. You could be in your 30s and you're watching your parents who are in their 60s or their 70s or whatever go at it like cats and dogs. It doesn't matter. So I don't want it to make, I don't want you guys to be limited to this idea of a small child witnessing their parents and you are the small child. No. Or rather, open yourselves up to know if you're the parents and you have small children in your home and they know and they're watching you have arguments with your spouse or your partner or, or whoever, that could be the case. But that's so specific. I, don't, I also don't want you guys to limit yourselves to that. But it's this feeling of being a child, being someone who doesn't have much power, who doesn't have much influence, and just having to stand on the side and watch people you know, go at each other. And that can be really disheartening or that can be really scary or that can be really like, you know, anxiety inducing or depressing and or, or it makes you angry, whatever. You know, we all have different reactions to certain circumstances, right? And what this Five of Swords is showing me is that it's, it's not petty arguments. It's very regular. Like this is a regular energy that someone is, 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 is witnessing or someone is, is used to or someone has been <sighs> subjected to. And the arguments, you know, they're going to run the gamut. You know what I mean? So it could be, and this is all air, by the way. So it's always explosive. And I'm not saying air energy in itself, air energy related to the air signs, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I'm not saying that only air signs are like this, but you have, we're going to talk about that probably next, uh, the Eight of Swords. But this whole corner over here is all air, meaning it's very combative in terms of communication. It's very like... I'm saying what I'm saying, you say what you say, and there isn't much negotiation, there isn't much uh, peacemaking, I don't feel. I don't think that these are the innate qualities of air, but when air is agitated, air sign qualities or, or the element of air is agitated, it can be very stinging, right? Like imagine, for those of us who know it, dead in the winter, you go outside and like it's a windy day, it feels like your face is being assaulted with like a million tiny pins and needles, right? It's just air. It's just oxygen moving <laughs> across the, the across your body, but it carries you know this the sharpness with it because it is so cold and because it is carrying. I guess I'm assuming it's carrying like tiny microscopic like crystals of the air, like the crystallized air or crystallized uh, moisture in the air, and that's why it stings your your skin. I'm assuming. I'm not a scientist. I don't know, but that's my guess. Um, but that's what this feels like, even though it's. It's air. It's wind. It's not like you're being hit with like a, a, a lead pipe or you're being, you know, actually stabbed with a with with a knife. But it can be painful to go outside and walk your streets in the dead of winter on a windy day. That's what this feels like. This feels like um, the temperature or, or the, the, the what do you call that? 
oh, what's the word? Climate, thank you. The climate of the situation is very cold. It's very sharp. It's very blistery, right? And when wind is going, it's, you know, for those of us, again, who have experienced it, if you're living in a sunny climate, good for you. Um, but for those who have experienced it firsthand, when the wind is like howling, that shit can be kind of scary. So that's what this feels like. In a situation, you've got three people on the Five of Swords. So I'm feeling, you know, at least uh, three people are involved. You know, a parent, child, two parents and a child, maybe. Uh, friendship circles, family dynamics. It can, you know, it can be any situation, Libra. But at least three maybe upwards of like seven or eight people in a family friend type of situation it's like blistering howling wind and everybody might be talking at once and overwhelming someone who's observing it maybe that's you maybe you're the overwhelmed party uh here in libra but somebody it's just like oh, this is sad and i don't know what it's about you know that okay thank you I don't know what it's about because everybody has their own opinion. When we talk about swords, we're talking about people's individual perspectives, right? We're talking about people's opinions, what, how they see the situation, where they're coming from, what they choose or, or want to articulate and, and, and express to the other side. And nobody in the Five of Swords really gives a shit about what the other side is saying, truly. This is not a card of compromise. This is not a card of trying to make things right. This is a card of, this is what I have to say, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it. And, you know, as you're expressing your side, the other side is expressing their side. And nobody is truly listening. This is just a bunch of talking. This is just a bunch of people coming into a situation, going into an argument, going into a disagreement, and the point for everyone is to be heard. And the irony is that while you're speaking the, and the other person is speaking, neither side can hear what the other one is saying. So there's no negotiation. There's no compromise. There isn't much of a peaceful resolution. If there's a resolution at all. And this five of swords, um, at least I've noticed recently when I've been getting the five of swords in my readings, and it's not always this way. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a regular thing it's cyclical it keeps coming up not just for you Libra other signs or in some personals and things like that and it feels like that's that's true here this is not new this behavior this disagreement or the way that these two people or four people or 16 people however many act when they come together it is like that it's like oil and water they do not mix well they don't get along they're very combative with one another like that's just the way it is and that could be why it's cyclical is that everybody sort of quote unquote knows or agrees or is 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 of the mindset oh when Tommy and and Susan get together or when you know Josephine and and Stanley get together it doesn't matter who these people are or you know <laughs> it doesn't matter when these two people get together it's just going to be like this there will be nothing positive coming from it and so people either try to avoid having these two sides come together or they prepare themselves prepare themselves they bolster their energy they steal themselves they become you know it's like going <laughs> it's like going out into the cold i know it's going to be freezing out there let me grab my scarf my hat my thick winter coat, let me get my gloves, let me get on my winter boots, like you know it's going to be freezing cold or blistery or sharp words when these people come together, so you prepare yourself. You know, if this is literally having to go and spend time with your parents or your grandparents or whatever the situation is, you know there's going to be a fight or you suspect there could be a fight and you don't want to be a part of it, so what do you do? Well, let me bring my earbuds along because I don't want to hear that shit. Or let me make sure I have a book to read because I'm just going to get up and leave. You know what I mean? It's like you know it's going to devolve into something really con uh, a, a, a conflict or something combative. And you're just like, okay, I'm just not going to engage myself. There it is. Thank you. I'm not going to engage myself. So whoever this is, again, I'm using it as you, Libra. But if you know you're not the one and you know you're the one who's, you know, <laughs> got little pins and needles that you're shooting at someone else. You know, take your side, be honest with yourself, but whoever is the observer, whether it be Libra or someone else, they feel incredibly 
ineffective in the situation or unable to move from the situation. Ah, unable to move. If you live with your parents or you live with people that are argumentative with one another and you're unable to move at this current moment, you don't have the finances together, you don't have a new place to stay, you, you know, if, if you're the child of these people, God, you know, I, judging by my analytics, most people who watch me are not under 18. Uh, uh, but you could be 20 something and live with your parents, right? So you just, you feel stuck. You have nowhere to go possibly in like a literal phys physical sense, right? Uh, but beyond that, the Eight of Swords is talking about mental prisons, right? So if you have grown up or you've been living in a, a marriage or you've been living with roommates or you've been working with, it doesn't even have to be a living situation, you could be working with people, whatever the close proximity relation or the, the reason for the close proximity of the relationship, right? Work, family, lovers, it doesn't matter. Someone feels mentally trapped, meaning... I feel as though some people in this energy might be in a position of blame, like blaming themselves, like I'm the cause of the argument or I'm the reason for this tension or I'm the reason that these other two people can't get along or I'm causing this by remaining silent. Like some people feel guilty that they're not speaking up um, and they real realize, maybe not realize, they, they suspect, thank you. They suspect that their silence allows this the, to continue and they feel guilty for not speaking up because a lot of times the Eight of Swords is about not only a mental prison, it also shows inaction. It also shows like this paralyzed feeling of I can't do anything, I can't say anything. If I speak up, this will happen or not having the words to speak, being too bombarded or, or surrounded by these different thoughts. You know, the swords represent our thoughts and our in our in our in our speech or our ways of communication right so this person might have i don't really have this problem personally so i'm guessing in a way <laughs> um you might have a thousand things to say but you don't know how to begin to say them is what this feels like um and again i'm getting like that image of a child or or a younger person and witnessing adults or witnessing people that you know and you love, you know, going at each other and you want to just say, stop this, or, you know, you want to compel one side or the other to listen and stop talking and all this other kind of stuff, but you have no true way of articulating that point or even getting the words out because you feel anxious about it or you're some, again, you're paralyzed, like your vocal cords. Like my, my throat is not, okay, there it is. I was like, I was like, my throat feels, feels fine. There it goes. It's like a little, t it's like a, a choking feeling almost. And I don't, I, God forbid if anybody's literally being choked, please God, let that, let that not be the case. But that's what this feels like. It feels like, um, incapable, you know, the eight of swords person probably in the justice card in the reverse and witness to the five of swords is just in a position of feeling or being incapable of affecting change in the situation. Um, interesting. Interesting. In some cases, and this is like a few cases, very few, there's like a sense of like abuse here um, where it feels like you know, not to be stereotyped, so I'm going to flip it because I don't want it to be this stereotype because, you know, it's possible the other way. But it feels like in a family dynamic, not only are their children silent or the children unable to speak and the children are just witnessing this barrage of verbal abuse or verbal, you know, arguments or whatever it is. I feel as though in some cases there is a spouse who is in the same position where they are being attacked verbally and they are being you know abused verbally mentally emotionally hopefully not physically as well um but you know not all of those are horrible right so what this feels like is again i'm going to flip it just to show it doesn't have to be stereotyped this way but let's say this is a husband who is constantly being berated by his wife constantly being abused verbally by his wife or his husband it doesn't matter you know everybody's welcome here everybody everybody is open to being the victim of abuse and i'm not i'm not trying to be a bitch about that like i want it to be literally understood just because 
<laughs> someone is a man or someone is in a gay relationship, it doesn't mean, oh, there's no such thing as spousal abuse. Yes, there is. <laughs> okay. So, um, that's what this feels like. It could also be in a, in a situation where we we're talking about a marriage with or without kids. Okay. There is a potential for there to be some type of spousal abuse, some type of very strong, like they're really hitting me because again, this is a corner one, two, three of swords energy or air energy. It's very much about communication and the vile way. Ooh, vile. Very nice. The vile way in which another person, at least one person, but I'm feeling it's multiple. In most cases, it's more than one. Um, but in most cases, or excuse me, in all cases, it's a vile way of communicating with another human being. Very, very disturbing things are being said, very hurtful things are being said, very violent things. You know, even if you never lay a hand on someone, if you threaten to do it and you do it often, like that can be really like, number one, it is abusive, but number two, it can really, again, like put fear into someone, you know, it can really intimidate the shit out of another person, threatening them all the time. And this is, I'm going to say some fucked up shit right now. It's like, they're, sh uh, they're giving me this thing of someone like being very descriptive of all the things they would do to another one to physically harm them. They never do it, but they have like this creepy detail of if I was going to kill you, here's how I would kill you. Say what? Why would you say that to anybody? Number one, unless you're a fucking psychopath. No offense. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe offense to the psychopath, but you know, uh, anyway. But like, there. If that's your situation, Libra, or you're doing that, or you've experienced that in your life, you know, God bless you. But there's something here about someone has like a very morbid, or very violent, or very uh, sick way, <laughs> for lack of a better word, a very sick way of describing the ways in which they would hurt someone else. Okay, there, now they're giving me another side of it. It doesn't even have to be physical. They're like, another way. If I wanted to hurt you, I would go and I would have like sex with your ex-husband or some shit like that. Or I would go have sex with your ex-wife or I would go do this. And it's just like, what? Like whoever, is, whoever this person is, piece of work, okay? To say the least, this person is a piece of work and they may or may not be acting alone, again, in this vile, very uh, disturbing way of communicating in the situation. This could be shared between multiple people. Maybe that's the way, you know, your family members talk to one another. Hey, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to my house. I'm going to get my, <laughs> I'm going to get my pistol. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, it's just like, what? I, listen, <laughs> not all families are like, you know, <laughs> you know, the Brady Bunch or something like that. A lot of families have some really interesting dynamics when they when they communicate with one another so whoever is here and here they feel really like tied down in the situation or tied to the situation there is no escape there is no way to mediate or or alleviate this this drama this trauma this incredibly uh dysfunctional situation and they just deal with it they just live this life and that's a sad way to live because in my estimation, or at least how I like to approach life is I have autonomy. And even if I had to lose certain relationships with people that I know and love and, you know, that might be my family or, or very close friends or even, you know, in, in the times where I had significant relationships, this is like, I'm not going to sacrifice myself to remain here. I just won't. And that's just me as a human. I, I hope, I would hope more people could live like that, but I know they can't for various reasons. But whoever's in this situation, I would hope that at some point you could exercise your autonomy or, or be able to, if you can't ar exercise it, at least be able to articulate that you're upset, that you are distressed, that you are disturbed and hurt and, and, and feeling confined to this situation and how you know, deeply upsetting and hurtful that is to you. Okay. What else happens, please? Mm, there it is. Wow. It's kind of what I was talking about just a moment ago. Look at me. 
looking at my plant over there and then I look down I'm like oh that's why I was saying that stuff so it feels like Libra in this situation hopefully whoever's in the eight of swords and the justice card in the reverse who is a witness to the five of swords they're able to get to this point of the hangman secondary major arcana for Pisces some of you could be dealing with a Pisces but you don't have to be um this is a card of more than reflection this is a card of of being put forcibly by the universe or the circumstances that you're living in right being forcibly put into a state of suspension a state of sort of gray area static energy where really all you can do much like i've said throughout the first three cards is sit back and observe sit back and watch sit back and contemplate and reconsider or refocus your your mind and your intentions or the clarity that you want on something else or 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 try to obtain clarity thank you try to obtain clarity and 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 insight in a different way right so in terms of this being the hanged man, it usually is a very solitary energy. So uh, what I'm about to say might not flow with that. But in terms of what we're talking about, dysfunction in a, in a family or friendship circle or a spousal situation, right? And, and having verbal conflict, this could be, you, know, you guys know me by now if, you, if you've been with me for a while, this could be seeking counsel. This could be talking to a therapist, talking to a social worker, if you have to file a police report and get people restrained or something like that, it could be that too. Um, but again, I say that with the knowing that more times than not, the hanged man is a solo energy. It's only one person on this card, right? It's only one person who's hung up by their, by their ankle by themselves. Um, and maybe that is how it's a solo energy. Maybe you're the first person to suggest, hey, let's go to therapy. Or if you do this again, I'm going to file a fucking police report because you're getting kind of crazy around here, Tom, you know, or, or Samantha or whoever it is. Right. Um, so it's something like that where you're passive, pretty passive when you get to the hangman, but being open to making new choices and new uh, actions or take new perspectives in a situation. Does that make sense? So in a lot of ways, it could be a reaction or, or a response rather to frustration. Thank you. Because together the eight of swords and the hangman, I'm going to say is a deep calling out for help that might just reside or resonate and, and reverberate within a person. These two together, not overly expressive towards the outside world. However, there's a call to action, like a drumming up, a stirring up of a, 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 a very, it's like intensifying. Thank you. There's this intensified need for things to change, for, for, for the circumstances to change, the behavior to change, to no longer be stuck and, 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 and restricted in, in the circumstances. And with the hangman... It's passive. There's something about this passive thing. So maybe there's like something going on passively or there's um, like the appearance of passivity, maybe. Oh, okay. I got you. I'm going to say, even though I don't think it plays in most situations, I don't think it plays in most. Recall back to the Five of Swords and how I said there's three people on this card. Look at how the the woman and the guy in the red coat, they seem to be engaged with one another. Like, they seem to be talking. And then you have that guy in the back who maybe he's an assistant. Like, maybe he's like, you know, the lackey of the guy in the red coat. Or maybe he's with the woman. I, you know, you really can't tell. But there's this idea of two people are distracted and they're highly engaged with one another. And that third person in the back uh, is kind of doing his own thing. That could be the appearance of passivity. Like, again... You don't, and I'm not a parent, and you know, if I was, I don't think I would be this type of parent, but it's this idea of when you're arguing and your children are watching you, you kind of forget about them, I'm assuming in many cases, or, or, or most of the time, right? And there's this idea that they don't exist, or what they're witnessing, they're just going to sit there and witness it and be idle. They're not going to say anything. They're not going to do anything. Now, in many times, aha, uh -huh, see, in many times... 
and especially in, in my personal experience, the children are aware, okay? They're watching, they're listening, they are very aware of what's going on. And sometimes you assume the seven-year-old or the six-year-old or the 15-year-old, they're just going to stand there and watch, or they're just going to go to their room and, and lock the door and whatever. And you don't take into account that the children can be keeping detailed notes about this. The children, if they're of age and, 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 and they're smart enough or they're, 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 they're cognizant enough, they might be on the phone calling the police because this is like the fifth time within the last month or so that mom and dad or dad and dad and mom and mom have been doing this. And like, listen, 911, my parents are, they're going at it and I'm over this shit. So there's something about even though this is passive energy or it, it appears to be passive, there is this call to action within this person or within this, you know, two people. Let's say if there were two children or, you know, two people who are tired of, you know, witnessing all this drama, right? There's this call to action within this person and they're going to act. Or if they're not going to act, they're becoming more ready and willing to act. Hmm? Yeah. Because they're, they're tired, my friends. Or more so than tired, I think that they're being sensible and, and realizing, you know, this repetitive energy, like I told you earlier, even though the five fives are not about cycles, this five of swords, as it's been coming up recently for me as a reader, has been signaling to old energy being drug or dragged back into the present moment. Like, oh, here we go. We're going to talk about things that happened 15 years ago. Because someone's not over it or someone can't deal with it or someone can't heal that energy or somebody, you know, you know how some people rely on like old information, like they might literally be over it, but they know it's going to like cause pain or it's going to be like a thorn in the side of another person. Like, you know, it's, it's vindictive energy, right? So this has been going on for a long time. Someone, I'm assuming the hanged man and the eight of swords person is like, oh my God. They're taking notes. Look at this guy. I told you that with the kid on the <laughs> calling the police. Like somebody has been, if not literally taking notes, like they've been compiling and or at least looking for patterns, looking for, you know, a rhyme and a reason here with the seven of pentacles, evaluating the situation and determining what to do next. So whether it's you or someone else, Libra, I you know, this is such a mixed bag. I would I'm curious how you Libras are all experiencing this because some of you are, you know, in the five of swords, arguing, shouting at the top of your lungs, throwing barbs at one another. Some of you are observing, some of you are receiving the energy. Some of you are going tat for tat, toe, toe to toe. It's, it's the whole gamut, but whoever's in the seven of pentacles, again, hangman and eight of swords, I believe is also attached to this energy is doing their homework is evaluating, you know, what is going to work to get to, how, how can this situation resolve itself? What can I do in order to help this situation resolve itself? Now, in tarot specifically, uh, in tarot specifically, or rather specific, more specific to um, the traditional understanding of the Seven of Pentacles, this again is a solo energy. This is evaluation of the circumstance of, 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 of the situation at hand. However, there is a selfish intent or or self-focused intent i should say so if this is your kid it's because they're tired of hearing the arguments it's because they're tired of witnessing all the crazy you know shouting matches going on at the grocery store in the house on the car ride at school wherever like this person is just like done having to be a part of that and they want out um, so they evaluate, what can I do? What do I need to do in order to help myself to, 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 to go there? This could be a roommate situation. You know, you've been living with people for the, you know, you could be living with like your extended family, like your cousins and, and your second cousins or your aunts and your uncles or whatever. And it's like, yeah, thank you very much for giving me a place to stay, but my God, you guys are crazy and I need to move out. So what do I need to do? I need to save money or I need a new job or I need to get a car so that I, you know, whatever you need. That's what the Seven of Pentacles does. What do I need to make this situation more fruitful for myself? What do I need to do to make this more um, conducive to, to my personal goals, right? Seven of Pentacles does this. So there's a progression, thank you, progression from going, feeling very stuck, tied, and bound in a situation, almost as if you were held hostage with this Eight of Swords, going to still passive, but actively or beginning to contemplate more active choices, active behaviors with the hanged man 
coming from a new perspective. Again, maybe in the Seven of Pentacles, someone has never considered filing a police report. No one has ever considered, maybe I should save more money and maybe I should stop, you know, going out to Taco Bell five nights a week and start, you know, saving my pennies together so that I can move the fuck out of this place. Shocking, but some people don't think those ways, you know. Um, but in terms of Pentacles, yes, we could be talking about money, but we're talking about making smart moves, smart investments, what to do, uh, down the line that's going to bear fruit that's what can i what can i do now that in a few weeks months or within a year or so right what can i do to set myself up for success in the future now that might not manifest anytime soon you know the moves that this person might make or begin to make now the plans that they're making now might not come to fruition for like i said weeks or months down the line in some cases, they might be, you know, pretty immediate because you're all going to be on different timelines, right? Some of you, this is, I'm talking about things that have happened, you know, that, that have been brewing, let's say they've been brewing since, you know, late last year, right? Some of you, this energy is just starting to brew. You just, you know, finally finished grinding the beans. Now you put them into the filter and now you're waiting for the, the hot water to start dripping through, right? Others of you, you're about to serve this hot cup of coffee. You know what I mean? So you're all going to be on different timelines here, but there is this, you know, plant it, plant the idea, begin to sow the seeds and you got to wait for it to, 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 to bud. You have to wait for it to burst through the soil, right? So there's a plan in motion. Again, I've given you a few examples, but they're obviously not going to play out forever for, for all of you. But um, there is this idea of planting seeds now. Someone is planting seeds they have an intention to make the situation better for themselves specifically. If it benefits other people, that's cool too. But I feel as though somebody wants in some ways to quote unquote rescue themselves or rescue the more vulnerable parties involved here, but it's going to take time or it's going to happen over an extended period of time. I really don't feel like a lot of sharp action here. I don't feel like a lot of day and night energy where you go to bed tonight, things are a certain way, you wake up in the morning and your whole life has changed. I mean, maybe, but I really feel as though it's more of a developmental energy, you know, growing over time, okay? Last card in the main spread. Oh, more air sign energy, a lot of air energy. So you guys are in your element, Libra. Uh, the star card, major arcana for uh, Aquarius your fellow air sign. Um, so this is a traditional, <laughs> this is a traditional card of healing Libra, of taking time, gaining a, gaining a new perspective, but then also being very intent with that, with, 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 uh, being very intentful, intentive, Int intental. No, I can't. What is that word? Intentional. Thank you. Oh, God. Being very intentional with the goal to get to a better place, to get to a calmer place, to get to a peaceful place, to get to a place where, you know, we can finally, you know, take a deep breath, you know, allow the wounds to sort of begin to heal or, or, or bandage the wounds or let them, you know, scab over, whatever. This is like also like a wish, like somebody wants to get to a place of, of restfulness, of quiet. Oh my God, yes, of quiet. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, listen. Not to completely stereotype, but of the three air signs, I'm going to say Aquarius is probably the quietest, right? Gemini is a chatterbox. Libra, you talk M more than Aquarius. <laughs> so this Aquarian energy is really looking for quiet, peace of mind. Yeah. I don't want drama. I don't want anything to do with arguments, fighting, you know, late night phone calls, showing up at people's houses unannounced just to create a shit storm. Like, no, this is like the rejection of all that or the What's this? Blocking. Thank you. The blocking of all of that. Maybe that is what someone is doing. Maybe someone has never, ever, ever, surprisingly, in this modern day and age where it's a lot easier, um, in some ways, uh, <laughs> to block a person. Now, the 
Aquarian energy with the star, or rather the star card on its own, is not about removal per se, or like a like a rejection thing. It's not about rejection per se, but it is about preservation. It is about preservation. It is about if you if you're familiar with the uh, the traditional tarot depiction of the star, you'll see a woman, a naked woman in a meadow. She's knelt, she's kneeling down by some water and she's by herself. She's secluded. Yeah. That's what this is. I'm going to seclude myself. And how do we do that in modern day and age? We block people to be secluded. We block people or we remove ourselves. You turn, you turn your Facebook off. You, you hop off of Twitter. You get off of Instagram. You go private. If you don't delete it, you go private. You shutter, you shutter it for a while. Yeah. That's what this feels like. It feels like maybe for the first time ever, someone is, is contemplating and thinking of the benefit of being alone or isolating themselves or blocking another person or leaving social media or whatever this is. That star, that intention and those options are viable. It's very real. And I think it would be helpful to the individual that I'm speaking to, whether it's you or someone else, Libra, is regardless. Whoever is this person, that person, that person, this is what they need. This is what they probably should do, whether they really do it, you know, in reality, you know, human beings, we have all, we all have free will. So it's not a guarantee. Nothing in, in tarot is guaranteed, but it feels as though if this person was quote unquote smart, they would do this. If they really want to get to a better place, if they really want some type of healing and peacefulness and restfulness in their life, this is what they would have to do. They would have to change their behavior. Well, first they'd have to open up and see things differently. That's the other thing. Okay. I told you here that the eight of swords person, they might blame themselves. They might, you know, you know, a lot of times when you're the victim of abuse, you start to blame yourself. You start to feel that you deserve it. Right. So someone needs to change that mindset. They will do that. Once they do that, they start to think of different things they need to do or how they can, again, get to a more peaceful, restful place in the long run. What are the seeds I have to plant now that are going to get me to where I want to go? Maybe that first seed that they plant is, oh, look, I've blocked your phone number. You can't call me. You can't text me. The next thing is I remove you from social media or I remove myself. Maybe the next plant or, or seed that they plant is I change addresses. I move and I don't tell you. Like in a case of abuse, in the case of, you know, having some traumatic and, and unfortunate, unfortunately volatile energy with another person, whether it be family, friends, lovers, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you have to do that. Essentially, ghost a person. Sometimes victims of abuse have to ghost their abusers. That's what this feels like. Like that scene from What's Love Got to Do With It? Where Tina Turner is like packing her bags in the middle of the night while Ike is asleep in the bedroom after he like beat her ass or some shit, right? That's what this feels like. Now, if that's your literal situation, again, God, God speed to you. God help you. Because I, I, I don't like to talk about those energies, but I know that that's reality. And I seem to be a channeler for, for such a thing, okay, in terms of my work as a reader, right? Um, but in any case, that's what this feels like. It feels like someone is, is, is plotting... A, a, a path to some sense of freedom or some sense of peace, some sense of being washed clean, going back to that image of the star card in her traditional depiction being a naked woman in a meadow, but washing themselves clean of this, this complication, let's call it, okay? Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> and what's the outcome? Hmm? Six of swords. If you're familiar with the traditional tarot, you already kind of know what this information or what this card is talking about. What I just said, leaving a situation for your own good. Now, I, again, am not like this champion of people just like abandoning their lives, abandoning their responsibilities and obligations. No, but what this feels like is someone has felt trapped, stuck. It's just, it's not conducive. Whatever the situation is, whatever the relationship status is or the condition of the relationship is, it just is not healthy. And the Six of Swords aims to get to a calmer, healthier, clearer point of view, clearer life, uh, uh, life path, right? Experience in life, you know? If you are in a house that is volatile, whether you're the victim of abuse or you're just the witness of abuse 
or you are just living in a high tension situation, no abuse, right? Whatever it is, who the fuck wants to live like that? Most people do not. Even if you've lived that way for the, the majority of your life, is it desirable? Are you waking up every day saying, oh my God, I can't wait until, you know, my parents get into another argument over some bullshit. Yay, it's Wednesday. No, most people are like, ah, I'm still here. They're still fighting. Or here I am and I'm trying to avoid an argument. I don't want to fight. You know, most people don't want to live this way. So this six of swords and everything that I, whoa, let's drop that. Uh, and everything that I've described in these four cards, at least, has been, and even in the justice card in reverse, I, I was describing it a little bit. There's this indication of someone doesn't want this. I don't want to be in balance. I don't want to be... Who the fuck would want to be in that early depiction that I told you about in, in the Justice Guard? Who would want to be on a carriage, in a car, whatever, that's out of control and is veering towards a cliff? Most people have instincts to save themselves, to, to find safety, to find some kind of new situation that is more secure. So in the, we've all seen it in the movies where there's like a car that's out of control or any vehicle that's out of control and you know it's going to go off a cliff. If you want to live, you better you better open that door and duck and roll if that's what you want to live, right? So that's what this is about. Someone in some cases feels like in order to live, maybe in a physical sense, save my physical life or in a spiritual sense, a mental and emotional sense, I need to duck and roll out of this shit. So that's what the Six of Swords is. Again, you could even look at it like that scene from What's Love Got to Do With It, uh, where Tina Turner, played by Angela Bassett, beautifully, yeah, she is doing it not only for the sake of herself, but she gets her kids. She's like, come on, sons, let's go. We got to go. It's the middle of the night. Where are we going? It doesn't matter. Get out of here. We have to go. Now, granted, in that scene, you know, she didn't make an, make an escape, but the intention was me and my children. Me and the people that I love, me and the people that I care for, need to go somewhere that's safer away from this shit. Yeah? That's what this is. Away from this shit. Hmm? Wow. Overall energy, seven of wands, defensive. So here we are. <laughs> Either you or whoever's involved are... Everybody involved, really. Thank you. Everybody involved? Uh, most people. They're going to say most people. Not everybody involved. But most people involved are coming from a standpoint of standing their ground. What is that? Defending. Yeah, defending. But what? Defending what? Defending themselves? Defending the people they care about? Yes. Um, the trouble here... Yes, thank you. The trouble here with this Seven of Wands as the overall... Because I said... Originally, it felt like I was more talking about this person, right? One, two, three, four, and five, right? The person who's like trying to make an escape or, or trying to get themselves to a better place, right? Initially, it felt like this belonged to that person. They're letting me know, no, 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 no. Everybody has this feeling. Everybody or most people involved in the situation has this feeling. So to take it right back to this movie idea, if you haven't seen this movie, I'm sorry, but this is like, you know, a movie that comes up very regularly for references. Um, in that case, in that scene, right, or sequence of scenes where Tina Turner makes an escape from her abusive husband, Ike Turner, right, in the very next scene, you see him come to get her because he, you know, was told where she was and bring her back. He was in this energy too, if we think about it in terms of Tara. He was defending his life, his family life. You're trying to take my kids from me. You're trying to break up my, my, my marriage or this marriage that we have. And he felt defensive. He felt like he had something to preserve, right? It's a warped way of seeing it because Ike Turner, you are an abusive man. You are a terrible husband. You're, you're, you're not a nice guy. Let's just put it that way, right? But he felt this way. I have something to protect. I have integrity here. I have something here that, that belongs to me that I want to safeguard. Now, in terms of the actual, I don't know, like, you know, in, in terms of like what that movie was about, not only were they husband and wife, they were also business partners, musicians together. So if she leaves, I can't continue my amazing career because I don't sing. I'm just this guy with a really terrible bowl cut playing guitar behind this amazing vocalist, behind this amazing performer. So he was going to lose his cash cow, essentially, right? He was defending that. 
So that's why they're like, this is belongs to most people. And there's a caveat that I'm telling you as the reader is that someone's perspective is a little bit warped. They think that what they are doing, what they're protecting, what they're trying to preserve is correct, even though it's not. There's nothing correct about maintaining a cycle of abuse because it allows you to remain in power. I mean, as an abuser, as an empathic person, I could get why they would get the why they would feel that way, but as the objective outside person, no, no. Abusing other people and and being manipulative and controlling of other people is just not a way to be. But somebody says, "No, that's the way I want to be and I want to protect that." Done. I don't want we're done. Thank you. <laughs> Libra, <laughs> that is your reading for February 2020. Uh if, if there was something here that you liked, please hit the like button. If you want to tell me how this resonated in your life, that would be amazing. You can leave a comment down below. Share the video, of course, if you want other people to know that you like my content here or there's a message here that you think someone would benefit from, go ahead and share it with them. And if you guys haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, my friends. That would be amazing. Uh, the numbers keep growing and I, I've enjoyed, you know, doing this work for everybody and I want to continue to do that. So doing any and all of those things would help a girl along, okay? Libra, I'll be back soon to do your mid-February readings. Uh, I will also come back with the no communication readings at some point in February. So you have at least those two things to look forward to uh, upcoming. I'll go live eventually for everybody. I'm having a hard time finding it in the schedule. I thought I would be able to do it in January and it just wasn't feasible. So hopefully in February I will find the time, but no promises, friends. No promises, okay? All right, Libra, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Take care.